Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and let's get straight down to UFC Fight Night 32. Vitor Belfort versus Dan Henderson's The Battle of the TRT Kings. And if you're watching this video before the fight, that means you're a client of ours. And we're establishing a really nice clientele base now. And, you know, we're very thankful for that. We thank you that uh, you appreciate our work, that you trust our knowledge, and that, you know, you're making, you're willing to make the, uh, the investment. So, you know, of course, we, I try to make you guys as much money as possible. So, what I'm bringing here is exactly what I've been working on, watching the film, doing the research. I mean, just just really getting as much, gathering as much information as I can before the fights, and um, you know, even leading up to the last minute, to the minute I am uploading this video, getting the most information that I can, and uh, putting our money, putting our money where our mouth is. You know, putting the money where the mouth is. Uh, guaranteeing 100% money back if we don't pick more winners and losers. Now, with that being said, one of the things I keep in mind is um, bringing picks that are uh, closer to uh, even, to an even money line, closer to um, dollar for dollar if possible, underdogs if possible. So always keep that in mind. I'm always keeping that in mind and always, you know, trying to see if there's if there's a, a, an underdog or if there's a, a line that has, um, you know, a, a good price or value or whatever. And uh, hmm. I got my lemon water here with some uh, yeah, apple cider vinegar in it. But uh so yeah, so it's not always, you know, a lot of times uh, we get some some slack for um, the the favorites. So like, oh, you guys go with favorites and this and that. And, and the one thing that I like to keep in mind is that um, there is no value in a losing pick. And that just means that, you know, oh, this guy, you know, he's at plus 300, but, you know, he's got a, an opportunity or a chance here to win and, and this and that and... But if the guy doesn't win, it doesn't matter whether he was plus 300 or plus 100 or plus 1,000 or plus 10,000 or plus a million. If, it, uh, if it's no win, then it's not a win. No winners are not, not a winner. So, uh, you know, so with that being said, with that all being said, I'm really going to let my nuts hang on this one. I'm going to guarantee seven picks, seven betting picks guaranteed for UFC Fight Night 32, Vitor Belfort versus Dan Henderson. So let's go. Let's dive straight into it. Um, man, I am just super excited for these guys. Really, really excited for these guys. And, and the first guy to lead us off here, so number seven, seven betting picks. It is Vitor Belfort inside the distance. The prop bet of Vitor Belfort inside the distance. We're not going to try to get real cute here and say it's a knockout or a submission. Just a straight up Vitor Belfort inside distance. It's it's currently sitting at plus 110, which implies a 47% chance of it happening. And uh, I just think that's ridiculous. You know, the, the fight is five rounds. Okay. It's down in Brazil. So Vitor's got that going for him. In Brazil, Vitor Belfort is, uh, you know, knock on wood. He's just like, you know, pretty much invincible. I mean, he he's just... That that's his backyard, you know. That's like me saying, getting up here and say, "Let's go fight in my backyard." You know, it's it's his home. So, um, very very difficult, very 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 difficult opponent to have. Vitor Belfort down in Brazil, and uh, just taking a look at their records, you know, him and Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson, he's a man's man. You know, this guy, I, I love Dan Henderson. He's one of my favorite fighters to watch. I remember one of the first you one of the first MMA fights I ever went to, ever attended as a it's just as a spectator, um, Dan Henderson was uh, was there, and the just the aura of this guy, you know, he just walks out there, you know, he's got he's got the the he, you know he puts his back lat spread out, he just just walks in there, the baddest the baddest dude in that place, you know, no matter what anybody says, just the baddest dude in that place, and and uh, he's just 
just doesn't care. Um, Dan Anderson just, just doesn't care. But unfortunately, you know, with as much respect as I have for him, um, when you're competing at the highest level for so many years, there's going to come a time and a place like it did for Randy Couture, like it did for Chuck Liddell, uh, Forrest Griffin, um, yeah, some of those guys that have been competing for a while and their time comes. Some careers are longer than others. But for Dan Henderson, his time has come. And uh, I bet against him when he fought Lyoto Machida. I bet against him when he fought Rashad Evans. I bet on him when he beat Fedor. Fedor was in the same shoes that Dan Henderson's in now for me. That's what I see watching all the fights and everything. And um, you have to know when to pull the trigger. And right now is the time. You know, it's a horrible matchup for him down in Brazil. And I know he doesn't care. And I don't blame him for it. You know, Dan Henderson, like I said, he's a man's man. He doesn't give a hoot. But uh, but Vitor Belfort, man, he's just looked unstoppable. And, and um, one of the things with Vitor is he gets injured. He breaks hands. But now he's using kicks. You know, he's using his, his legs. And um, you know his submissions are nasty. I mean, his submission game is just top-notch, black belt. Um, so if if he does clip Dan Henderson, um, he could you know take his back quickly, like uh, like Anderson did, like Anderson did to Hendo. He could uh, grab an arm, like he did to Johnny Bones Jones. And unfortunately for us, you know, Johnny Bones Jones got out of that one. But um, yeah, so Vitor Belfort inside the distance, he could do it with his hands even if he wants to. He should should be uh, should have faster punches. And um, yeah, I love Vitor Belfort inside the distance. It's three stars, okay, three stars. So it's a small to medium play. Do not parlay it. You can if you want, but uh, but that's not what I'm guaranteeing. So uh, so definitely straight up, you know, let's not be greedy. Plus one ten, three stars, small to medium. The next star, the next three star play is pff, man this guy is just oh man he, he's just incredible to watch and um watching him fight reminds me of the first time i watched junior dos santos fight when he fought fabricio redoom way back in the day when fabricio was the number one contender and he was you know in cusp of getting the title shot and and they put him up against this guy just with power i mean just just real life power there's a difference between power and power like there's you know there's a significant di difference between a guy who can knock somebody out and a guy who's just got killer i mean just just killer strength and that guy is brandon thatch um inside the distance brandon thatch inside the distance at minus 190 that implies a 65 percent probability rate and um I remember the first time I watched Brandon Thatch fight, like I said, it was just one of those moments where I know I'm watching a special fighter and I know that there that is a guy I want to invest my money in and I'm riding the Brandon Thatch train until until it derails and I'll, I'll know when it's about time to to back off. You know, maybe when they put him up against a really really tough wrestler. Um but yeah, Paul Thiago is not a very tough wrestler, you know. He's well-rounded and um I I, uh, I admire what he's done in Brazil uh, as far as like a special forces SWAT kind of kind of thing because uh, there's a lot of crime in Brazil just like anywhere else but especially uh, in some of the um, some of the ghettos and some of the uh, favelas you know there's just a lot of stuff that goes on so he's a good guy and um, you know I admire that you know I have family that's in uh, law enforcement special forces and stuff like that so I love that kind of stuff but. You know, I also love MMA. I love the UFC, and Brandon Thatch is just a real killer. I mean, like I said, he just goes out there. He look at his record. I mean, he finishes every, finishes everybody in the first round, and uh, what he did to uh, to uh, Fast Eddie, you know, is just just unbelievable. So uh, Brandon Thatch put my my stamp of guarantee on that one inside the distance. Um, and then moving along, this guy, uh, I can go back and forth on. But at the weigh-in, he showed me that he prepared, that he's coming in here not messing around. Now, for me seeing him in this kind of shape, it makes me understand or better um, believe why Anderson Silva has him as a training partner. 
and that is Rafael Calvacante Feijao inside the distance at minus 170 implies a 63% chance of hitting and uh, man he's gonna put poker jack uh, he's gonna put poker jack on the uh, either in retirement or fighting uh, for somewhere in, 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 in Europe you know under on a circuit on a MMA circuit out there but I love Rafael Calvacante I mean I've never seen him in this good a shape and Rafael Calvacante, I go back and forth on because sometimes he's in shape, sometimes he's not. You know, some guys are like that. And uh, I'm drinking some of this water here. And even Daniel Cormier, uh, you, you can't really put too much mm, weight or too much trust into what some of these guys say on the uh, on the fuel TV and that kind of stuff because you know that I know that they sometimes they'll say, all right, who do you want? No, I'll take. Uh, uh, I'll take Calvacante, all right, I'll take, uh, I'll take Poker Jack, you know, Pekryak. And uh, usually um, usually it's for, like, main events. Like, you know, when they're talking about a main event, one guy will take one, one take a guy will take the other just to build up the fight. But regardless of that, uh, Daniel Cormier even said, you know, uh, when he comes in shape, he's ready to fight. When he's out of shape, you know, he, he'll gas or not even so much gas, but just foobar, you know, brain fart or just maybe mentally defeated knowing he didn't prepare. He's prepared, and uh, one of the interviews I was listening to, um, I listened to a lot of interviews, all day, all day I'm listening to interviews, and um, uh, one of the things that Calacante said is, you know, he's, I'm the best, I'm in the best shape of my life, and I said, yeah, right, you know, I've heard that so many times from so many different guys, um, I'm not believing that shit until I see you guys at the weigh-ins, which is one of the reasons why I wait until um, after the weigh-ins to do, to do my prediction videos, although I've already got ton of notes and you know I've got um, I'll show you guys real quick here I've got so many of these all throughout all throughout my place and anyways but yeah he's he, he's just in shape ready to go ready to knock out Porker Jack first round knockout Rafael Calvacante if not a submission I mean he can do whatever he wants with him it's his fight to win in Brazil I just feel very confident in him extremely confident minus 170 putting my stamp of approval on that one and then, uh, so that does it for the three-star plays. Let's move right along to the four-star. These are medium to large bets, so uh, they are definitely parlay worthy. And uh, one thing about the the amounts, um, I've considered doing the whole unit thing. I've considered doing just many. There's a lot of different options, but one of my favorite options to do is um, depending on the the rating. So five stars hit at 100% rate, you know, knock on wood. Four stars hit at 80% rate, knock on wood. And then three stars hit at about, um, excuse me, 58 to 60, about 58% right now. But I'm working on uh, improving that, obviously. You know, I'm always working on improving. Um, so what I do is I say, all right, how much money can I lose? So set aside however much money you can lose on any given uh, weekend. And it's best to do it that way because then, see, I can afford to lose X dollars. You've already lost the money. So then that's it. You've already lost it. But that's when you say, okay, now sometimes people ask, why are you getting so excited? Well, it's like now I'm fighting for my money because I already set it aside and said, okay, I can lose this amount of dollars. Usually I do more when there's five-star picks or I do more when there's five star picks, more four star picks, not so much with three stars. Um, although, like I said this week, I'm really letting the letting the nuts hang, letting my nuts hang on this one. I'm gonna guarantee all those inside the distance ones um, because I feel very confident in them. But um, so that's a, that's one way of doing it. So just depending on what you prefer, how you feel most most comfortable doing it. And uh, obviously, the, the, if you keep a system, the higher the higher that you hit at that rate, the more money you're willing to risk or, or lose. And then, you know, you get excited and it's just a great thing. Um, but, of course, you always want to be careful and, and, you know, you never want to do anything stupid and you don't want to, uh, you know, the way I see it is you just work harder. So whatever, whatever you do for money, whatever job you have, you know, you work harder, you get up earlier, you, you um, whatever it is you do, you just work harder and you set more money aside so that you can do what it is that you want to do, your investments or whatever you want to call it. And then, um, and that's it. You know, there's no, there's no, uh, 
uh, ands, ifs, or about it, or no, no, no time to waste or cry about anything. You know, you just have to, you have to uh, be prepared to lose. And if you can't lose, then you, you don't, you don't play. You know, same thing with the with the market when you invest and you make your investments. It's the same exact thing, but you just have to um, have a system, and that system will give you confidence. So that's it. Four stars, medium to large play, and probably worthy. Vitor Belfort minus 225 implies a 69% chance of winning. His chance of winning is higher than that. And he will win by knockout or by submission. He will win in the first or second or third round. And um, yeah, he's he's gonna win this fight. Um, the fifth guaranteed pick is Brandon Thatch sitting at around minus 325. Pfft, this guy is just Power. This guy is just pure power, knockout power, intelligent guy. Uh, very impressed. Uh, implies about 76%, 76% chance of winning. The tongue twister. And um, it's about right. You know, his chance of winning is a little higher, but not very much. Um, it's about right. So uh, I love I love that that play all day. And then the sixth one is uh, Rafael Calvacante. Four stars. Uh, sitting around minus 295. You can parlay it. 74% chance of winning. His odds are his chance of winning is a little higher as well. Not by much, but a little higher. So I love that play. And uh, so that's six right there. Three, three stars, three, four stars. And now we're going to move on to the knock on wood. Handy dandy five stars. I haven't had one of these in a while, guys. So <laughs> when I say five stars, listen, because... Uh, you know, uh, the, the time to be humble is, is, you always have to be humble, but I've spent so much time and energy and effort into these picks that um, it, I just, I have to be, I have to be optimistic. I have to go into these fights optimistic, excited, um, pff, everything positive. So five stars, large, the huge play, definitely parlay worthy, but if you just play this all on its own, oh man, I'm just super excited. Fight doesn't go to decision. The fight does not go to decision. Belfort versus Henderson, five rounds in Brazil. It's not going to go the distance. It's sitting at around minus 200. I can't believe it. Only at minus 200. It implies about a 66% chance of winning. Our chances of winning here are much higher than that. So fight doesn't go to decision. And the fight is Belfort versus Henderson. We've got five rounds. And I love that one all day. Bet the farm on that one. And uh, I'm super excited for that. You know, I just, I know it's going to cash. I have the, the same feeling that I always have. And and, um, and it's, it's the same thing. So those are the seven, seven guaranteed picks. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, for our clients, you will get the text file. So I'll send you the cheat sheet and then also the quick reference. There's two, two different um, uh, files. So I'll send you both of those. Or actually, my dog will. So my dog's uh, doing, taking care of all that stuff. And uh, it works out great. You know, it just works out great that, that, he, that he does that part and I do this portion. Now, um, some food for thought. So not guaranteed picks. So they're at, uh, they're at your own bet at your own risk. But um, I like to share it because I'm sharing my thoughts and sharing my my um, my thoughts and my hunches and my and my uh, research and my feelings and my leans on this. So these are almost made the cut. So these are bets that um, I couldn't guarantee, and I can't uh, I can't sit here and say you know that that oh I would bet the farm or anything like that. But um, they, they are as follows: fight doesn't go to decision. Fight does not go to decision. That's Thatch versus Thiago. Uh, that's about minus 300. But um, because I do feel confident that Thatch will win, that's why I prefer Thatch inside and then Thatch straight up. But uh, if you're not as confident in Thatch, that might be something you like. Fight doesn't go to decision. Cavalcante versus Poker Jack. Igor, I like calling Poker Jack. And um, minus 250. That's sitting around minus 250. So fight doesn't go to decision. So that's 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 a very interesting play there uh, for the people who don't like Cavalcante. Hey, you know that might be something you you, you could uh, you could play. And then the other one that's very interesting to me is uh, fight doesn't go to decision. Um, the new Russian fighter Akhmedov versus uh, Perpetuo. 
Uh, that's at minus 180. Very interesting. Fight doesn't go to decision. So uh, I'll probably play that one. Nothing too big or crazy. But uh, it's interesting nonetheless. Now, the next level is a level below almost made the cut. So, of course, these are also bet at your own risk. And uh, these are picks on fights. So I'll give you guys my my uh, my first one here that's interesting. And that's the, the new Russian guy coming in, Akhmedov. Akhmedov. And uh, he's fighting uh, Perpetual. And um, Akhmedov is very impressive. But um, I was looking at his opponents that he's faced. And they're low, low caliber. You know, they're not uh, UFC caliber fighters by any means. But uh, the UFC does always bring the best Russians and uh, the best European fighters to to uh, to the UFC, so um, I know that I'm gonna get a uh, a tough guy, uh, a tough out, and also he hasn't fought in six months, and I know he's improved. I know he's been working and improving, so that's what makes him even that much more interesting. Um, and with Perpetuo, he's barely UFC quality, in my opinion. You know, he's he's uh, he's not quite there. And uh, with Akhmedov being as well-rounded as he is and working on those skills and the UFC bringing in good Russians, it's just, it's just a, a very interesting pick, but I, 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 uh, I can't guarantee it or, or bet it. But he, Akhmedov will be the pick. The next pick is Brad, uh, or not Brad, um, uh, Tavares, uh, Thiago Tavares. And um, with this particular one, uh, Tavares versus Salas. So... So Tavares, he looks like a little mini Vitor Belfort. He's skilled. He does have skills. He's tough. But his fight IQ is horrible. And he has a bad chin. So those are two bad, uh, two bad recipes for, for, uh, for a betting pick and, a, and, a, and uh, putting your money on it. So I can't, I can't put my money on him. But I do think he will win. Tavares in Brazil. Um, Salas, you know, Tavares is better everywhere in my opinion, and um, Salas is going down to Brazil, and he looked, he did not look good against Aaron Riley in my opinion, a guy who, Aaron Riley, a guy on his way out, so I got to go with uh, with Tavares, and I can't remember, uh, for some reason I thought about Brad Tavares, but uh, Thiago, or, or I, I put their last names down, but I, I can't remember... Uh, him too well. I guess that just goes to show you, well, you know, how high I think of him or how much I think about him. But uh, in Brazil, we got a lean. We got a lean Brazilian here. Mm. And uh, now the next ones are, are too. There's too many variables. So mm, just too many, too many things that could go either way. And uh, let's start out with uh, with Vitor's protege. So my pick in this fight is is uh, Ferreira. It looks like Ferreira, but it's Ferreira. With an, the R's or H's, Ferreira. And Serafian. Serafian. Interesting fight. I got to go with Ferreira, like I said. Because he is training with Vitor. He is Vitor's uh, like adopted son. He's also training with Rashad Evans. He is improving rapidly. But... Sarafian is a tough out, man. I was really impressed when he fought um, CB Dalloway. I was not expecting him to be as good as he is. CB Dalloway also very impressive to me. Had he not been messing around with the in the Tim Boach fight, he would have won. And very disappointed with his performance there. I don't know what what he was doing. He thought he was D, one of the Diaz brothers. But Serafian is a very tough fight. I'm not counting him out at all. My first gut when I when I saw this fight announced was uh, Serafian because uh, Ferreira uh, doesn't like to get hit. Nobody likes to get hit, but he he um, something about him that I just something about the way he he goes about about his business in the octagon. It's just I don't know, but but um, his his capoeira is very impressive. And uh, like I said, he should he should be improved. A very big guy, but Serafian too. You know, Serafian is, is is juiced up too. I don't know if Ahita is juiced up. Probably, my guess is he probably is sharing the uh, the TRT there with Vitor. But but I know Serafian is for sure. I mean, Serafian looks like a ninja turtle. But this will be a very interesting fight. It'll be interesting to see who comes up on top. And uh, like I said, my first gut was Serafian, but the more and more I look at it, and the more uh, fight footage I see, and then the 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 fact that uh, Fajeda just just a little bit better in my opinion, 
but uh, I know Serafian will take more of a beating. So it's just it's it's a tough one to pick. It's a tough one to pick. It's slightly like it's like uh like if it can't be 50 50 because otherwise I wouldn't make a choice. But it would be like 51 49. So either way. Now the next one is uh, Ponsinibio versus Laflair. Ponsinibio, interesting guy. He's uh, he's he's, he's um, fighting he's living in and fighting now in brazil but he's from argentina so he's very dedicated he moved to brazil to better his uh jujitsu and you know uh, brazil one of the best places in the world for jujitsu um he's a tough brazil um alum so alum so we know that um that he we we have fight i had fight footage to watch on him and um you know he, he and uh, Noguera, Big Knock says that he had some of the best fights in the house, and it, it's true. You know, this guy is just very focused, very dedicated. He's got a lot of power, and I'm looking to see improvements from him. So my, if I had to say what I want to see from him is this is what we've seen from him, but better, a uh, uh, better version of of Ponsinibio. Ponce and with Laflair, the reason I can't bet Ponsinibio though is because um, Laflair has is very solid. And he has wrestling, the undefeated wrestler, but he is coming down to Brazil. So I got to lean Ponsinibio here, and uh, and that's that. Now, the next fight is uh, Jason versus Stevens. I'm going to go with Jason. So Jason is the pick. And uh, also, just to recap, um, I'll be sending you guys, my, my dog Dan will be sending you guys the, the text files. So uh, if, you, if you forget or you're like, oh, shoot, what, what did he say? Um, it's not a big deal. You'll get the text file. You can read it, and then you can see the cheat sheet too. But uh, Jason, so Jason, very well rounded. Uh, continued improvements. I've seen him just get better and better. But his fight IQ still lacks a little bit for me. When he's in the octagon, sometimes he is, what is this guy doing? You know, he could he could um, take the fight, uh, leave it on the feet, and beat him up, or he could take it to the ground, just depending on the on the situation. But it's, sometimes it's like, what are you doing? And with Stevens, um, I, the reason I can't bet Jason is because Stevens at 145, he's been game planning. I saw in his last, last fight, he went in there with a game plan. I think um, he's been watching his buddy uh, Miles Jury, an uh, excellent fighter. And, and you have to go in there with a game plan. You can't always just go in there looking for the knockout. But the fight is in Brazil. If this fight was in the United States, it would be closer. But in Brazil, I have to lean with Jason. And... Um, and uh, like I said, he's, he's just continued to improve, and, and I'm very impressed by Jason. Minus 225, I think he's sitting at right now. That's that's too steep of a price, and and if Stevens wins, I wouldn't be surprised, which is why I have it so low here on the on the totem pole. The next fight, Pepe versus Cecilia. See, I'm gonna pick Pepe. I'm gonna go with Pepe. Pepe, I like Pepe, and I like the way he fights. He's got submissions. He's got solid jujitsu. He just needs to improve a little bit more. I mean, he just needs to work on his stand-up. He needs to get to the fight. He needs to get the fight to the ground as soon as possible. He will be able to submit Cecilia if he does that. But, but I can't bet Pepe because Cecilia is powerful. He's got knockout power in the first round. He's a wrestler. But uh, after that first round, uh, what I'm hoping for is that Pepe can go take him into the second, um, in the third, maybe the third round, and submit him there. The style matchup does favor Cecilia, but in Brazil... Once again, I got to go with the Brazilian, and, and that'll be uh, Pepe. Um, like I said, I do like Pepe. I like uh, his heart. You know, he, I like how he goes in there and treats it like a, like a war. That's how, you know, that's how fighters should treat their fight. You know, it's, it's not just a fight. It's a war, you know, for, for who's going who's gonna, to uh, continue on their quest, who's going to continue making money fighting, and... Um, I like fighters who, who who approach things like Pepe, but he needs to continue improving, and and um, and Cecilia has that that puncher's chance. But I'm gonna go with Pepe. Um, that's my pick. The next one, Martins versus Krukshank. I'm going with Martins. Now, this is an interesting match because it's, they're very they're very evenly uh, every, very evenly matched, very even evenly on on uh, on. <laughs> On level playing field, so very close. Martins has the home field advantage. Um, for me, when I travel, it really takes uh, it 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 takes a toll on me. Like me personally, when I travel, it takes a toll on my body. I definitely feel it. And um, when these guys are flying, 
down to, let's just say 50% of the guys that travel from the U.S. down to Brazil feel it. I mean, it, that's a big disadvantage, a huge disadvantage. And when they're so evenly matched, you got to favor the Brazilian, and that's it. You know, home field advantage, Martins brings it. And with Cruikshank, he's overrated. And, you know, in my opinion, he's very overrated. And uh, he calls himself the Detroit superstar or something like that. I mean, this guy is just nuts. I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I can't, I can't um, uh, pick a fighter like that, you know, who, who is just uh, so overrated in my opinion. And, and, he, and he thinks, he thinks more of himself than he really is when it comes to fighting. And, and um I don't know, just just a weird feeling, just a just a weird, interesting uh, matchup here, and and I'm I'm favoring Martins here. Now, and then the last but not least is the flyweights, and this one to me is as close to 50-50 as it can get, uh, and that's Tome versus Ortiz. I'm gonna pick Ortiz once again, home field advantage. He's got an impressive record. Tome does, but against who? You know, it's. He had a good test in Lineker, and he fought. You know, what well, he did what he could against him, rocked him. But, you know, Lineker's a beast. Um, so this fight was in the United States, I would probably favor Ortiz. But because it is in Brazil, I'm going to go with Tome. Ortiz, training at Rufus Sport, man, that is a, if you're betting on Tome, that is a scary thing. Rufus Sport is just on top of their game, especially with the lighter guys, you know, with um, Anthony, Sergio, um, that little wrestler who who stole the fight from from the Japanese fighter. What's his name? I, f I forget a lot of these guys. <laughs> I know who he, uh, Camus, Chico Camus. That, that, that I mean, I can't stand that guy He's taking taking the fight from from my fighter. But uh, there's a lot of small, good small guys over there, and um, unfortunately for Pat Barry. But uh, but yeah, uh, this this one's just a toss up. But I'm going to go with the Brazilian in Brazil, Tome. Now the dog of the night. Bet at your own risk, of course. Ponsinibio. Ponsinibio sitting at around plus 120. Not a big dog, but, you know, a dog nonetheless. In the parlay of the night, bet at your own risk. Let me see here. Let me move this up real quick here. Let's maximize it. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, so Ponsinibio, uh, plus 120. Parlay of the night, bet at your own risk, of course. Excuse me. Calvacante. And Br and Thatch, Calvacante and Thatch, those two guys put together should equal around minus minus one thirty, minus one thirty two. I love that parlay a lot. And uh, the Hail Mary parlay of the night, bet at your own risk. It pays eleven to one. Calvacante, Thatch, Belfort, Akhmedov, Tavares, and Martins plus eleven hundred, eleven hundred. So that does it, you guys. Now, if you're watching, so that covers it. Now, a couple things I wanna I wanna uh, get off my off my plate here because I've been thinking about them. And um, if you're watching this after the fights, and you're, it's probably because you like to bet on MMA, and you probably love the sport, and you probably like what I have to say. So, so thank you. You know, uh, I'm flattered that that you feel that way. Um, and I would encourage you to go ahead and give us a shot. So buy one of our, our buy one of our deals, buy one of our packages. Um, you're going to bet anyways, right? So you're going to bet on it anyways. So why not have us in your corner? You know what I mean? Why not have us helping you and, and say, Hey, maybe there's, maybe there's something that you, that whether you want to follow our advice blindly, you know, the record speaks for itself. And, and I'm not perfect. Um, I don't want anybody to think that that I think that oh I'm the best and this and that. It, when you start thinking that, that's when you you lose. You know, when you start thinking you're the best. Um, one of my favorite fighters, GSP. And if you take a look at him and his career, you know he's constantly looking for um, advantages, constantly working hard, constantly um, uh, seeking the advice or the the seeking the the training of. Um, of masters or of the martial arts and um so it's when you start thinking that you can do it all on your own or do it all by yourself that's when you lose so i would encourage you guys to you know give us a shot yeah i, I guarantee you guys will be happy and and if i don't deliver on more winning picks than losing picks then we'll give you your money back N you know no um no questions asked 
you know, right away, you know, you don't have to wait a week or anything like that. Usually it's like right after the fight. If, if, if you know, if we do lose right away, I tell, uh, have my dog, I tell Dan, hey, give these people back their money because, you know, we had a, a losing night. But, um, you know, so there's really, really no risk. I mean, of course, like I said, you always want to be careful with how much money you bet. You never want to bet more than you can lose. But if somebody is saying, hey, listen, I, you're going to bet anyways, uh, why, why not stack the odds in your favor? You know, why not have us in your corner? And um, especially, you know, with these five stars and four star picks, five stars are 100 percent. And the four star picks are a little over, I believe they're 81 percent, 80 percent. And they'll, they'll probably be higher after after uh, this weekend. Um, knock on wood, you know, they will be higher. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, I just, I love this. My dog loves what he does. We both love working on this MMA dogs thing. And uh, we have a good clientele base. But I know there's a lot more out there um, of you because I see how many people uh, shoot me emails and then how many people uh, watch the videos. So, um, so yeah, I would, I would encourage it. You know, uh, like I said, it... You never want a bit more than you can lose, but once you find that amount that you're willing to lose, then you know you get excited like I do. You jump up and down. You it's just it's a lot of fun, and uh, and you can make money at it. I mean, why not? So, so yeah, that, that pretty much wraps it up. And uh, what else? What else was I gonna say to you to you guys who are who are on? The, yeah, you can check check out the website. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, my I am Hector at MMA Dogs MMA D A W G S dot com. Check out the website. Um, shoot an email to my dog if you have any questions too. He's at Dan at MMA Dogs, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I wish I wish uh, we could all watch the fights together, or, or uh, you know, I feel like with with the amount of clients that we have now, it would be cool to to uh, you know watch the fights or, or something. But uh, but for now, you know, we've got this little little video video system and stuff that we do, and um, that's good enough. I'll probably be out. I will be out in Vegas for uh, UFC uh, uh, when Anderson Silva fights Chris Weidman um, in December, and possibly uh, in a couple uh, next weekend when uh, GSP fights uh, Johnny Hendricks. So that'll be interesting, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, that sums it up. Um, oh man, I'm really excited, especially for for Brandon Thatch and, and Vitor Belfort and Rafael Cavalcante. I am really looking forward to those fights. And that's it for tonight. So I'm going to go get some sleep. And I wish you guys the best. Good luck.